Hi and welcome to Vintage Doll Collector. Today I want to share with you some dolls that I picked up at an estate sale a couple of weeks ago. There's a little bit of everything here from wonderful antiques to artist miniatures, so let's take a look. This is a Kessner Hilda doll made in Germany just before World War I. She has a bisque solid dome head with delicately painted hair, brown sleep eyes, and an open mouth with two teeth. She's incised with a lot of markings on the back of her neck. JDK is the maker's initials. Guess Gesch is an abbreviation of a German phrase which means copyrighted. Number 1070 is the mold number. Then at the bottom it says made in Germany with a number 12 indicating the size of the doll. Hilda has a composition five-piece body with bent baby legs. Her body does have some damage, but not too bad. She came wearing a dress that was way too big for her, but I'm not keeping her so her new mommy can decide what she should wear. I believe this is a Lenchy doll from the 300 series, probably dates from the 1930s. She's made of felt with painted features and a mohair wig. Her outfit is cotton organdy with pink felt strips sewn vertically onto the skirt. Under the skirt, she has an organdy slip and pantalettes. Her pink felt hat and shoes match the dress. She's a lovely doll. She has some dirt, though, but not in too bad shape. She's also going up for sale as I don't collect lenchies, but it's wonderful having her, even for a little while. This little china lady is a definite keeper. She's not in perfect condition. She has a nose rub and rubs to her hair. She's missing the fingers on one hand, and her dress is in rough shape, but I still love her. She has a pink-tinted complexion and brown eyes. Usually I show you the dolls in the condition I got them in, but in this lot I clean some of them up, including her. Her hair is in an early sausage curl style. Here's a sweet little Hurtwig boy doll. He's got molded hair, and I like his big bow tie. He's called a half bisque doll because of his molded upper torso. They made a whole family of these dolls. His hands are probably original, but his lower torso is obviously newer and I'm pretty sure his legs have been replaced. The old fabric on his arms is disintegrating and leaking sawdust all over the place. He's seven inches tall. This paper mache doll has had a rough life by the looks of her. She lost her arms somewhere along the way. Her face has some wear, and she has a sizable dent in the back of her head, but she has a primitive country charm that I like. She's got nice molded boots, too. Here's one of my favorite dolls from the estate sale. She's a Dolly Madison China. It's hard to see because it's all painted one color, but there is a molded bow in her hair. I really love the style of her dress. It has tiny cording, and the sleeves are wonderful. I think the buttons are covered with thread, crocheted or tatted, maybe. I'd like to clean the dress, but as you can see, it's disintegrating in places. I'm afraid if I tried, it wouldn't survive the process, so it might have to stay as it is. One of her kid leather arms has come off, and the other is halfway there. She's lost part of a foot, too. Too bad, because her boots are awesome. Got some heads, too. The black-haired one is a common Civil War style. She's got a bit of a nose rub, or maybe it's a firing flaw. The little bonnet head is probably a later one. This tiny head would make a nice dollhouse doll, don't you think? Oh well, I already have a lifetime of projects lined up, so I won't plan on getting around to that. Poor frozen Charlotte has lost an arm somewhere. She has the sweetest face, though, and a covered wagon hairstyle. She's a keeper. This is a reproduction of an antique doll made by Linda Marks and dated 1981. It's a Kessner mold. I think it's 237, but the mold number is very faint on the back of the head. 
She has a cute face and a beautifully made outfit. I fell in love with this Parian lady. When I saw the photos online, I wasn't sure if her head was the antique or a reproduction. I could tell her body was newer. But after seeing her in person and consulting with my friend Joanne, the conclusion we came to is that she's a repro. Joanne thinks possibly by Emma Clear. I don't mind because she's a keeper either way. Unfortunately, her shoulder plate has major damage. I don't know if you can tell in the photo, but she's only got about this much of her shoulder plate in the front. It's gone on either side. And the entire back is broken off. You can see the broken part goes all the way up to her neck. But what a face and what a hairstyle. I'm so glad somebody took the trouble to salvage her and make her into a nice doll. I like her dress too, although these red buttons might have to go. The one thing I don't like is her hands, which are not the right style at all. They just kind of bother me. But that face, I could look at her all day long. This is a very nice composition doll. Not sure if she's a debutine by R&B or possibly an early Vogue doll. I absolutely love her face. She's had some work done, a little repair under her chin, and the wig isn't original. I won't be keeping her because compo dolls don't do well in my house. It's too humid in the summer and too dry in the winter. But I'll find her a good home. I restrung her and gave her this dress. I'm hoping I can find this doll a home, too. This is an early Tiny Tears by American Character. His rubber body is in rough shape. One arm is cracked through at the elbow, and his right leg is bad, too. Too bad. Hopefully someone will love him. Here's another composition doll. This big girl is Sweetie Pie by f and I had to restring her, too. Her head was all floppy. She has the flirty eyes that go back and forth. Missing a few eyelashes. Again, not a keeper, but nice to have for a little while. I better get her out of here soon, though, before she starts cracking and peeling. Here's a baby doll from the 1950s. The body is a shiny hard plastic, but the head is a different material. It might be celluloid. The mark on the back is MQ, which I found out is from Michael or Mario Corzola, made in Italy. She has very pale blue sleep eyes. The outfit was very yellowed, almost brown, but it cleaned up pretty well. I soaked it in OxyClean for about eight hours. This is Talking Busy Ken, made in 1972. He no longer talks, unfortunately, but at least he has his original outfit. I just need to find him some shoes. The busy dolls have jointed wrists and movable thumbs so they can hold things. I was very happy to add him to my Mod Era collection. I actually got two of these dolls. One had a perfect head and one had a perfect body, so I swapped heads and was able to get one nice doll to keep and the other one I can sell. I got some vintage Barbie clothes too. They're not all in great shape, but might be able to clean up. This is the jumper to Friday Night Date. The question is whether I can soak it without all the felt appliques coming off. This one is called Jump Into Lace. This is the robe from Sleepy Set. And this dress is Flower Wower. The nylon floral print nighty belongs to Francie. It's from her Sears exclusive Pretty Power set. And this is a Skipper Best Buy dress from 1975. There's also a couple of mommy made things here and a few nice clone items. Check this out. And I dream a genie doll would look good in this, don't you think? I'll have to keep my eyes open for one. This Chrissy paper doll from 1970 is called Fashion and Hairstyle Boutique because it not only has all kinds of wonderful outfits for Chrissy, but has these cool wigs too. This is just fun to play with. Look at these outfits. Totally mod, huh? I got an Angie doll. She's one of Dawn's friends in her original dress. 
have a couple of Angie's already, but I don't mind adding one more to the collection. She's my favorite one of Dawn's friends, I think. Got the baby to the Sunshine family, too. Her name is Sweets. I don't have the Sunshine family mom and dad, but they aren't hard to find. She's a little cutie. I do have the happy family couple. They can babysit until I find her real parents. I also got a couple of interesting toys at the estate sale. I don't collect toys, so these will be for resale. The Fisher-Price Jalopy is a wooden car with a cute clown in it. It's from the 1960s. And these ducks are by a company called Brio, made in Sweden. Kind of fun. I got some awesome miniature dolls at the estate sale. This one looks like a miniature antique French jumeau doll. She's by Betsy Rouse, an artist I was not familiar with, and she's just beautifully made. Her eyes are glazed so they look like glass eyes. Her hair's done in long curls and her outfit is lovely. These two sweeties are also styled after antique dolls, but in this case they resemble German characters more than French bebés. The smaller one in the sailor dress is incised Hansen on her back, which I believe must be Kathy Hansen, a very well-known miniature doll maker. Her big sister's clothes are glued to her, so I can't see the mark, but they look very much alike, so I think it's safe to say she's by Kathy Hansen too. I think this baby is meant to be a re miniature reproduction of an antique doll too, but I'm not sure which one. She just looks very familiar. She's incised Benzel on the back of her head, which would be Joan Benzel, another well-known miniature artist. She has glass eyes and chubby cheeks and bent baby legs. Her eyelet dress and bonnet are very sweet. Check out this wonderful trunk set. The doll is just two inches tall and has a head full of long curls. She wears a crocheted dress with silk ribbon detail and a slip and pantaloons underneath and carries her own doll who is just three quarters of an inch tall. She comes in her trunk with a stand which is glued in place, another crocheted dress on a hanger, a tiny violin and sewing machine. The drawer opens. The whole thing is a miniature work of art. I don't see any tag or marking, but her clothes are not removable, so there may be a mark on the doll that I can't see. I wish the maker had signed her name on the back of the trunk or something. The amount of work that is in this set is just amazing. This pretty girl is little Bo Peep. She's got a brass shepherd's crook and her little fuzzy sheep. I like the way her hair is done in these long corkscrew curls. Her straw hat is very detailed, with lots of fancy silk ribbon work. Her clothes are very securely attached, so I couldn't see any sign of a maker's mark. Look at this awesome miniature wooden bench painted with Raggedy Ann and Andy. The detail is fantastic. It's painted to look as though they are sitting on a patchwork quilt. It has a heart-shaped cutout on the back, and that detail is carried through with the heart appliques on the bottom front. It's signed on the back by the artist. And here are Raggedy Ann and Andy, as miniature porcelain dolls. Aren't they cool? Their faces are beautifully painted. I could make out the number 87 on the back of their heads, but I'm not sure if that's the year. They seem newer than that. I couldn't make out the rest of the mark. Well, that's it for my estate sale haul. I think I did pretty well. Got some dolls to sell, which will pay for the ones I want to keep, and I get to share them with you guys, too. If you want to be notified when I have new videos posted, click on the subscribe button and the little bell icon. Thanks for joining me, and see you next time.